What's up you guys, I'm Holly. Welcome back to my channel and Happy New Year. I hope you guys had a good holiday season and that you got some recovery, some rest hopefully, and that you're ready to get back after it. Because today I'm talking to you about how to plan your running around your strength training. So if you're in a period of time where you're more heavily gym focused, you're in the gym more than you're outside or on the treadmill, this video is for you. This is gonna help you understand how you can stay good at both things while prioritizing your strength work. So I did do a video where I talked about how to plan strength around running. I'll link that right here so you'll have it. Otherwise, we're gonna jump right in. And make sure you guys stick to the end because there I give you my number one top tip for hitting any goal of any size in your training. So let me define strength training or strength work for the purposes of this video. This could be any number of things on this list. You could be doing HIIT classes, high intensity interval training. That's gonna be the Orange Theory, Barry's Boot Camp, F45, any type of class where you're keeping that heart rate high but you're going through sort of a circuit motion lifting weights but usually at higher reps and lower weight. Basically you're getting a new challenge every time you go to that class. You are not usually lifting super heavy during those classes but you are getting a great workout. Some of you might be going into the gym just focused on how much you can lift. Every single day and week you have a system, a plan, percentage you're gonna lift. You add weight slowly, four weeks down the road, couple months down, you now can lift a lot more than you were at the beginning. So that's the back squats, deadlifts, chest press, bench press, all those things that you really focus on to build that muscle mass and increase the load that your body can handle. You might also be working with a personal trainer, someone who completely tailors your programming to you. This might be heavily physique based. I want more toned shoulders. I want my butt to be bigger. I want my legs to be smaller. <clears throat> personal trainers can help you with that by really working on small movements, very detailed movements in daily patterns that give you those results. You also might just hate, hey, my left ankle feels really weak. Can we do exercises just to strengthen my ankles? Absolutely, they tailor that to you. You might also just be doing a CrossFit class like I do if you've watched any of my other videos where you get kind of that half and half. Some heavy lifting and then a Metcon, Metcon standing for a metabolic conditioning piece. So those are different ways that you can be getting that strength training in. You might also just be kind of going to the gym and just freehanding it every time you go. A little bit of the elliptical, a couple of bicep curls, stretch, call it a day. But whatever it is you're doing, all of that stuff is in the gym. And that's what we're focused on in this video, how to keep that at the forefront. Now I also wanna acknowledge why you're prioritizing your strength training right now. Number one, a lot of you are probably just trying to get stronger. I have friends that weren't able to lift a suitcase into the back of a car and it made them upset, so they wanted to prioritize strength training. You might just wanna feel better. You've heard that weight training actually gives you the benefits, that blood flow, overall health, that brain function, clarity of mind, those benefits just from lifting weights. From a physique standpoint, the way I just mentioned with the personal trainer, you might just be wanting to change your body tone up, or for a lot of guys, build muscle, get bigger. You might want the community. If you're looking at those group classes uh, for a sense of like stress relief or breaking up your day, you know, the stress of work, you want something to look forward to, community can really be found in a gym. That doesn't need to be a group class necessarily, but being around other people, also focused on their goals can be really inspiring for a lot of people. Lastly, you might just wanna be in there because it's different than what you're used to. If you've always run your whole life and now you're breaking into that strength scene, you're gonna to wanna to learn how strong you are and where you can go from there. If you were an athlete in school or after and you've been pro, and now you need something to kind of orient your goals towards because otherwise it just feels like this nebulous, oh, I'm supposed to work out and be healthy. Strength training is a great way to kind of add some numbers to it and make you feel like you're working towards something week after week. You might also be doing your strength training to build better posture and habits. If you're someone who sits all day at the office, strength training can really help counteract those aches and pains that nag you day to day. So I mentioned all those benefits of strength training. It's great, we're happy to be in the gym. Why are we even talking about running at all? Well, if you guys are like me, and I know a lot of you are because I've seen your comments, we don't wanna be boxed in just one category. We wanna be able to do both, and we wanna be able to do both year round. So I am going to give you clear ways to add that running in that won't take away from the strength work. And this is important to understand because running gives us so much that strength work does not. 
Running, for one, is just a really mentally clearing practice. It's kind of meditative in a lot of ways. It's that good, steady, aerobic pace, that burn in the lungs and in the body, but in a way that's just steady. In the gym, we're more broken up, right? We have those reps, those sets. We stop, go, stop, go. We don't really see that in running. We're able to just go nice and steady, enjoy the view, enjoy our music, podcast, clear our head. If you're doing any of those hit classes, like I mentioned, the F45, Barry's Boot Camp, whatever, you notice you have a lot higher endurance than other people next to you if you're adding in a little extra running. So having that piece help you in the class is always a win. Lastly, you might just be wanting to build a new skill. Can you prepare for a race at the end of this year? Can you start working some running in in the winter and then fully transition to your run training in the second half of the year, knowing you've got that good base going? So, so many reasons to add it in, but it is different than strength training and it does have its own benefits. Let's cut straight to what people in the gym are primarily scared of when it comes to running. If you're a guy, you might be scared of losing muscle mass. You go in in the gym, you're building that weight, building that strength and adding the muscle mass just to go out and lose it when you go run. If you're running hard three times a week, you might be in this place of breaking even where you're never really seeing yourself get stronger and you're kind of staying the same at your running as well. We see less of this with women just based on how they produce that testosterone and build muscle in general, but men certainly can have this issue if they're not balancing properly. Also, tired legs. You go do that gym workout, you're gonna go add in a track workout, you go the next morning and you don't feel like you can give anything to it. That's super frustrating because it feels pointless that you even went out to run in the first place. Vice versa, I go for a great run, trail run, whatever it is, and I come in the next day to try to PR my back squat, how do you think my legs feel? Not great. So when we look at it from this perspective, these are certainly things to watch out for and be aware of as we plan what types of runs we'll be doing. Lastly, if you are lifting quite a bit, you've noticed your cortisol levels will spike, which might mean you're hungrier and eating more, which those additional calories will turn into extra weight, which could weigh you down on your run, which leads to less performance or worse performance on your running. So that's also something to consider. Now I'm gonna share my exact strategy when it comes to building these runs in. This is what I've been doing for many years. It's worked for me. It makes me feel really good, really strong, and really in shape no matter what season of training I'm in. Three different types of runs. I will pick from this list. Sometimes I'll do all three. Sometimes I just do two of them. In my primary gym training season, when I'm mostly there, I'll do four gym workouts and then two to three runs. So the first one is kind of my feel good run. This is that medium distance, flat run, put on a good uh, podcast or music playlist, whatever it is, and just get out there and sweat. This is just one of my happy place runs. I like to do this to feel good, to feel like I'm sustaining a good effort without killing myself or being overly sore the next day. I will usually do this type of run, honestly, when I'm cherry picking and don't like the CrossFit workout, or I just need to kind of de-stress and clear my head. So this is really about environment and just putting yourself in a good position for a medium distance run. For me, that'll be kind of that six to eight mile range. Second run, this is gonna be the trail or longer endurance run. And I might not be training for a race at the time, but I like to get outside on the trails at least once a week if I can. This is completely for my mind and my focus. I like to get out on the hills, the rocks and terrain, practice my footing. That means when I do get to that running training season, I'm a lot more confident on the trails. I'm not building back up from square one. This is usually for the weekends. I love making this kind of a bigger event, even if we're not going super long, do it with a group, do it with a friend, but getting myself in the mind space of working through tough situations. Just recently over the holidays, I actually went and did some long ones out on a trail in Arizona. I was out in the sand with the mountains around me. It was amazing. I was totally solo actually for that one, but it just helped get me back in the mind space of doing hard things when you, know, you have those up downs of your mental space. You're not always feeling good the whole time. Last run on this list is a short one that I like to do on the same day as strength. So pick a day, I don't care what strength workout it is, but something where you're gonna challenge yourself to run either before or after. I would say two to three miles does need to be longer than that. This is really just good for you making yourself tough. It also is a really nice way to break up that leg muscle either after something heavy 
or get it warm before something heavy. So I've done both. I've gone and run two or three miles before we do a big back squat day or as a shakeout after back squats or deadlifts or something or cleans, I will go do a shakeout run afterwards. Again, a little additional sweat, mind space of, okay, I did something hard, now I'm doing a second thing that's hard and putting those together, I really enjoy that as well. So that's kind of my list of the three and like I said, during a uh, gym focused season, I'll usually be in the gym four days a week and then do two to three of those runs. Pick and choose from this list as you see fit. I really have found great results from all of them. But if you have you know, friends who do a track workout on Wednesday, you wanna make sure you're at it, prioritize that track workout. If you wanna be out on the trails on Saturdays and you know that for sure, prioritize that day as well. So do what works for you. And remember that doing things that you actually enjoy accounts for more than half the battle. If you're gonna stay consistent and stick with something, you're gonna to need to like it. So really prioritize those workouts that really make you happy and make you feel good during the week. All right guys, I saved my best advice for the end here and I think you can apply it to your life beyond just training. We all should have a running list of goals. We add to that list, we make sure that we always have new goals coming up and that we're fresh and you know responsive to what they are. But if these goals are not in an order, we struggle a little bit. So if I have running and strength training up here at the top competing for number one, what ends up happening day to day is I get super focused on all the holes in my progress, what I'm not good at. Small example would be, like I mentioned, you finish a heavy back squat day. I keep using that as an example, but finish a heavy back squat day. The next day when you go run, you just feel heavy and tired. All you're thinking about is how you wish your legs felt better. When really, you just got a run in and a heavy strength day in, and you should be really proud of yourself, but now you're focused on what you didn't accomplish. Compound that over days and weeks and you get really down on yourself. So I encourage you to put your training in seasons, even weeks at a time, and make sure you know what the most important thing is to you and be okay with that. If you're like me, be okay being decent at both. They both make you happy and if that's good enough for you, that's all that really matters. For way more on balancing muscle and running in your life, click right over here for my playlist on that. All my videos I did are right there. And if you ever are interested in online training with me or doing even a run consult or anything, a lot of you guys have reached out about it, click down in the description. I've got my links there for my intro app where you can do a FaceTime with me and also for my personal website where we can set something else up that's more personally individualized to you. I will see you guys in another video. Have a good one.